Every time you are in a prophetic meeting, be very cautious. Because you don't leave the place neutral. You are either lifted or let. When the first prophet came, he said he set up for the rising and the falling of many. No neutral of some. How can you say showers of blessing? Five thousand. Nonsense. So he said, that's the only way that God will bless me? These guys are thieves. That's why you have been going in financial circle all these years. Because nobody invited you here. You came on your own. And if you are angry with that statement, walk out. I want to be very sensitive. You don't need a prophetic ground the same. You are either up or down. You don't need a prophetic ground neutral. You are either lifted or dropped. You don't need a prophetic gathering. The same. You are either blessed or cursed. I want to be very sensitive. I have had many people in our ministry that has no reflection whatsoever of the commission. They are under a cause that cannot be explained. Don't ever attend the prophetic service except with an open heart. This child is set up today for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and for a sign that shall be spoken against. That was what Simeon said when he heard Jesus in his hand, the first prophet that ever came. I didn't just come to the world, I was sent to the world. I was separated for a commission before I knew it. Do you know when I first heard the story of Moses crossing the Red Sea, I told the carpenter, make me a rod. I will use this rod to divide the Red Sea for the people. Hello? As a small child, that's what I said. I've never told you that story before. You never heard it. I said, make me a rod. I'm going to use this rod to divide the Red Sea. I didn't even know where people were going. But if somebody uses a rod to divide the Red Sea, all you need to is give me a rod. I'm going to divide any Red Sea I see. I didn't just appear and be here by chance. I didn't feel like, let me go and preach. He grabbed me by the neck and poured his word in my ears. And I remember writing my wife in 1981, I said, listen to this. I said, as a prophet of God, I say, listen to this. I am sent like Moses was sent. My mission is to bear people out of captivity. My mission is to terminate the slavery of mankind. My mission is to raise up the poor out of the dung here. My mission is to make the hopeless become hopeful. My mission is to say to the Christ, talk. The lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed. That's my I didn't send myself that. What will I do with your money for God's sake? I had plenty of money before you knew me. What will I do with your money? People here give 8 million, I don't even know them. That is the face, not the name. Money. What I've been swimming in, how many years? Coming without stress, coming without sweat. I said one day to one of my sons, I said, all this thing they call a jeep. You know my wife and myself can do it. All this give a jeep, give a jeep today, give for mission tomorrow. Me and my wife only can handle that. So your money is not really relevant. <laughs> it is your soul that I'm after to give you a sense of meaning for living. Please grab this. I am not your enemy. I'm sent to help you out. The God who helped me sent me to you to help you. That's it. So when words are coming and your heart despises them, you are caused by that. Now, that's why many are struggling. They are, everybody pray for them until they almost have a bald head. But 
your case is settled today forever. Luke chapter 3, please, verse 1. Luke 3, 1. Now in the 15th year of the reign of what? Tiberius, Caesar, Pontius, Pilate being governor of Judea, and Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of Etunia, and of the region of Trachumis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Aene, Annas, and Cephas being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. And he came out of the wilderness into all the country about Jordan, Jordan preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. The word that came to him in the 15th year brought him out of the wilderness to the city. It brought him out from the wilderness, out of the wilderness, into the city. It brought him out of the corner, into the limelight. It brought him out of oppression, into distinction. It brought him out of pressure, into pleasure. The world that met him in the 15th year, that it's meeting you now in the 15th prophetic year of this commission, is bringing you out of that hiding corner, out of that place of reproach, out of that place of shame, out of that place of stagnation, into your place of distinction. It came to him in the 15th year. It hit him there. It met him there. Teach me to number my days to know the significance of what each day represents, each year represents. And the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me, your wilderness journey terminates here tonight. That depression you have suffered over the year ends here tonight. That humiliation that is tearing you in the face comes to an end here tonight. That financial embarrassment that you have suffered over the year comes to an end tonight. In the fifteenth year, the world hit him and brought him out of the wilderness of want into the city of abundance. It brought him out of pity into envy. It brought him out of degradation into elevation. It brought him out of humiliation into honor and blessings. The word of God to you right now, all that see this day and are hearing the voice of the prophet, is that your wilderness journey is terminated tonight. <laughs> Your wilderness journey terminates here tonight. Amen. Your wilderness journey terminates here tonight. Amen. Your wilderness journey terminates here tonight. Amen. That wilderness marriage that you wish you were not married. That wilderness business that is a constant concern. Whatever represents a wilderness experience, you have left Egypt, but you are not in Canaan. And the fifteenth year represents the end of the wilderness journey. So shall it speak in your life. So shall it speak in your life. God said, no matter your wonderful experience today, it is still a wilderness com compared to this prophetic program. That is, you have seen God, yes. We share testimonies every day. He said, but watch the event, event from now. Watch the event from this hour. 
the events in your life from this hour, it will make all the past years look like nothing. Watch it. It will make a heaven of your home. Watch it. It will convert the abundance of the sea to you. Watch it. Whatever can harass Jesus will not be able to look near your life. The word of the Lord came to him in the 15th year, saying, Enough of wilderness. John, come over. Enough of wilderness. Come out. Enough of wilderness. You have stayed here for long. You have stayed here. The, the mosquitoes have been feasting on you this long. Come to the city, John. Come. Come. The prophetic agenda says after 15 years, you don't stay in the wilderness anymore. He says, Come, 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 come. It's happening. It's happening. You will walk into miracles that will bog your mind. God said to me after those days on the mountain, He said, Behold, I've touched your tongue with a coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you say it, you see it. Listen to me, except God has not sent me. If it's a child you are looking for, and except your heart is not open, except your heart is closed, except you have some other alternatives you are using to support, to, to, to front for you, which I can see, which your friend can see, but if it is my God, that is only from him you are expecting. The next victory celebration, your set of toys, your triplets, your dancing baby boys, your beautiful baby girls, they are in your hands. So the wilderness of barrenness, impotency, lost man come. Find Roy. It ended this hour. Everything that makes you hide your head is over tonight. I read from Second Chronicles. The baseline for this prophetic access. Second Chronicles chapter 15. Somebody said to himself with conviction, My wilderness journey is ended. Is ended. The sound of the prophet has come. The sound of My wilderness journey is over. My journey is over. I'm taking my steps into my Canaan. The land flowing with milk and honey. Milk and honey. We are the favor of the Lord dwells. In Second Chronicles, one of my loveliest scriptures, it caught fire as I stayed before the Lord and looking at it. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah! And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Azariah the son of Oded. Second Chronicles chapter 15. And he went out to meet Asa. And said unto him, Hear ye me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin, the Lord is with you while ye be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will also forsake you. And then he said, Now for a long season, Israel had been without a true God and without a teaching priest and without law. But when they in their trouble did not turn unto the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him, he was found of them. 
Before then, in those days, there was no peace to him that went out, nor to him that came in, but great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the earth. A nation, destroyed of nation, was destroyed of nation, and city of city. For God did vex them with all adversity. With what? With all adversity. God did vex them with all adversity. But it's a be strong, therefore, and let not your hands be weak, for your work shall be what? Rewarded. Now, when Asa heard these words, like you are hearing tonight, and the prophecy of Hodeh the prophet, he took courage and put away the abominable idols out of all the land of Judah and Benjamin and out of the cities which he had taken from Mount Ephraim and renewed the altar of the Lord that was before the porch of the Lord. And he gathered all Judah and Benjamin and the strangers with them out of Ephraim and Manasseh, that's verse 9, and out of Simeon, for they fell to him out of Israel in abundance when they saw that the Lord his God was with them. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, verse 10, they gathered themselves together at Jerusalem in the third month, in the fifteenth year of the reign of Hassan. Amen. Amen. And they offered unto the Lord the same time of the spoil which they had brought, 700 oxen and 7,000 sheep. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord their God, the God of their fathers, with all their heart and with all their, and their soul. Verse 13, that whosoever will not seek the Lord God of Israel should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. And they swear unto the Lord with a loud voice and with shouting and with trumpet and with cornet. And all Judah rejoiced at the oath, for they had sworn with all their heart, and sought him with their whole desire, and he was fond of them, and the Lord gave them rest round about. You know, that's what you are getting into now. Come and say, rest round about. It's in the 15th year covenant package. Rest round about. And also concerning Makar, the mother of Asa, the king, he renewed, he removed her from being queen. Verse 16. Did you see that? Because she had made an idol in a grave, and Asa caught down her idol and stamped it and burnt it at the brook Kidron. But the high places were not taken away out of Israel. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was perfect all his days. And he brought into the house of God the things which his father had dedicated and that he himself had dedicated silver and gold and vessels. Verse 19 and there was no more war unto the five and thirtieth year of the reign of us. From 15 to 35 that's 20. The next 20 years of your life you shall not smell war. Reaka to Bosuzia Recatabanos, Jacqueria to Hoto, Brecalosa, Vitarita Barbarica to Zay, Yoko Rita Protip Rada Caradiz Riaba, Jacqueto Broto Brecates Ziria, Yacatru Becredi Yatoria da Ba, Oka Tegrede. There was no more war. The 15 year opened up the destiny of a nation. Your destiny opens up today. Whatever looks like a lack today becomes surplus from henceforth. Everything that appears like a trial is turned to triumph.
But to think here is the year of decision. They have tried it on their own. It didn't work. There was no peace to him that went out, not to him that came in. But great vexation was upon all the inhabitants of the earth. But when they turned to the God of their father and sought him, he was fond of them. And they entered into a covenant to seek the Lord God of their fathers with all their heart and with the whole of their desire. And they swear with a loud voice. And all Israel rejoiced because it was not forced on them. It was a decision made from within the heart. If you will enter into a covenant to seek the Lord God of your father, with all your heart and with the whole of your desire the next 20 years of your life is eternally secured <laughs> so you need to take a covenant step tonight I did it 1976, September 12. My wife was referring it to it in that her powerful teaching in the morning. She used some scriptures I've never seen. That day I said to God, it's me and you forever. Anybody else to the bush if you want. I disconnected from anything that could tamper with my relationship with him. Father, mother, lay to rest, I tell you. Me and you forever. As a matter of fact, I called my wife to end the courtship. That's why I say, in case you want to follow this kind of man who wrote this kind of thing, after that last night encounter, sign it here. Me, you, God. Three of us are here. And she signed it. I have rest round about. That's the truth. Rest round about. All my enemies only hide from me. I don't hide from them. When they see me coming, they dive into different places. And I just go on the highway where God has placed me. There is none of my enemy that is smelling the favor I'm walking in. No. That is your master key into the 15th year prophetic program. A personal decision to go for God. A personal decision to stick to God. A personal decision. A covenant with an oath that I'm going nowhere. Every star in every field of human endeavor is made in the crucible of sacrifice. Every star is made in the crucible of service of, of sacrifice every there is something that goes from you to get you to where you are going so when the best of you goes into god the best of god comes forth in your favor and gets you to where no man could have taken you to When Israel returned to God, their 400 years of bondage ended. Let my people go that they may serve me. If you don't let them go, I will kill your son. When you return to God, he turns his hand against your enemies. He turns his hand against your enemies. All your enemies will go into hiding from henceforth. Amen. All your enemies will go into hiding from henceforth. Amen. All your enemies will go into hiding from henceforth. Amen. Do you want rest roundabout? 
is part of the package for tonight. Do you want war to cease? You can live in the war-free zone of life. That's where I live. You say life is full of up and down. It's not in my Bible. It's not in my Bible. I've come that thou mayest have life, not have life small and have trouble small, and have life more abundant. That's what he said to me. That you may have life and have it more abundantly. They can describe me so bright that there is no dark spot. That's not in my Bible. I'm only to look at the stars to be able to number what blessings I'm entitled to in the covenant. I don't look at the color of the sky. The truth is, our ministry has never gone up and down in 15 years. We're going like this. This is how the graph has been. It hasn't cornered down this way. It's been going like this. And my whole life, from 1976 to date, has been going like this. Like this. I've never had a better reference for last year. War can be terminated. Up and down can come to an end. It's a covenant that deals with it. It's a covenant that deals with it. It's a covenant that deals with it. I was sharing humorously that what my wife and myself gave last year to the ministry, to, to the gospel of Christ, to the kingdom of God, everywhere we were a privilege to sow seed, was more than the cost of the aircraft that our mission bought. That means me and this girl could have bought one if we wanted. Not talking about, you know, it's not that hey, they bought an aircraft. It's a thing I can send to them to send to me. They won't ask me where is the money. Because they know that guy has it. The monies are not in the homes, are not they're in the banks. Who the banks know? Don't they talk to themselves? The reason I'm sure to this way is that God has destined you to share greater death testimonies. But you must know the flight that gets a man there. It's a covenant flight that guarantees supernatural heights. You enter into a covenant with God that no force is able to come in between. When you board that flight, you are heading for a supernatural height as far as destination is concerned. You can't be on board that flight and not know. I behave this way because I'm under a covenant. Everyone who has been around with me over the years know that this boy is not saying what others are saying. He says something else. Can't you see the step he's taken? When we were giving offer in the morning today, and I, I discovered that the day this commission was established, was the, the, ministry, the ministry was commissioned, what was collected as general offering from everybody, all the people that love the Lord and love those that came, is less than one tenth what I gave this morning. As my regular offering Sunday or Monday, every service I appear under heaven till Jesus comes will not be less than that. And I sign checks in millions for tithes. It's not my fault. I found the secret very early. You don't play games to make marks. I knew I cannot be barren. Why? Because thou shalt serve the Lord your God. And God knows I'm serving him. The devil knows I'm serving God. I know I am serving God. All the demons know I'm serving God. Do you want to see when that man came out and said, Daniel, servant of the Most High, does thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee? He said, Live long, go, King. Boy, I'm here. My God has sent this angel, he shot the mouth of the lion. Nothing guarantees you access into rest like a covenant of service. A covenant of service, an unwavering committer to God and his affairs. A hearty devotion, a rooted stand for the kingdom. 
makes all the marks. We are flying over a country. The president phoned me in the morning from another country where we were. What time our plane will touch down in this country so he could meet us at the airport? The owner of the country. <laughs> I said, No, sir. Uh, how far is your place to the airport? He said, 10 minutes. I said, We'll be there. Amen. He dressed up properly before he went up. Checked himself. Amen. <laughs> You are going somewhere. You can begin the journey right now. If you want a change, it is an opportunity to be in a prophetic service of this nature to initiate the change you desire. Initiate it. They renewed the altar of the Lord. Their relationship with God was renewed. And he gave them rest round about. And there was no more war for 20 years. Do you know something? Many are standing here today that 20 years time, you will stand to testify. Yeah. That I had that war. That for 20 years, boy, you won't have any war. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. I tell people, I said, I don't, know, I don't have war to pray for for 40 days. That's why I don't fast 40 days. There's nothing fighting me. My prayers are very short. I only spend time in praising God. The truth is that I don't even have what to pray for for one day. Tell every devil you meet on the road. That's what he said again. I don't have what to pray for for one day. I said to God, won't you even wait for someone to pray before you answer him? He said, no, not everybody is called to pray. Before you call me, I will answer. While you are here speaking, I will perform. Now, see the growth we experience here. It is, it, it is just covenant sense. It's covenant sense. I never spend one day in prayer, sir. That's the truth. Prayer of what? God, what would you have me to do? That's it. Covenant people ask, what would you have me to do? Not to go, come and do it. That's for babies. It's a new day for you. I don't blame you for fasting 40 days. If you know what I know, you won't do it. I won't blame you for it. But strike a covenant deal tonight. Every devil on the road will know you have caught something. Yeah. Every devil on the road will know you have caught something. Yeah. Listen to what I'm saying again. The 15th year marks the end of your wilderness journey. Yeah. You secure your access into a war-free zone by covenant. You terminate crisis by covenant you secure rest round about by renewing the altar of the lord you secure rest round about the kind that this boy and this girl are enjoying rest round about rest ra now i have not had one thing to pray about my wife and my children there's nothing to pray now can you blame me for not going to hospital i'm not sick is it wrong? It's not wrong, but it's for the sick. Now that I'm not sick, what will I say I'm going there to do? I say, just I'm coming here because I've not come here for a long time, so keep me here. Don't do that. Either. Not everybody has a headache. So get your own healed. That's what I'm talking about. Listen to me. Nothing guarantees access into our earthly heaven like covenant. A heart for God that is established under an oath. Under what? An oath. Nothing like it. I am not just lucky. No. God gave me the opportunity to know what makes it happen. And that's what I'm sharing with you tonight. Particularly as we mark this 15th year, when God has declared the end of the wilderness journey, you don't have no business hanging around there anymore. The land of Canaan is now your own. Yeah. It was their own personal decision 
that led to their own personal distinction. The end has come to all your frustrations. Thou shalt serve the Lord your God. He shall bless your bread and your water. He shall take sickness away from the midst of you. You shall not be barren or cast your young in the land. The number of your days he will fulfill. Can't you see the deal? It's clear. I have not seen, nor he has heard, neither has entered to the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for them that love him. Kingdom stars are addicted lovers. Men that are addicted to God and his kingdom, they are the stars in the kingdom. Too many charismatics are only having charismatic fun in church. I love you, Lord. You are so wonderful. As if God is marking their phonetics. That's not the issue. That's not the issue. I saw a young man recently. He walked down here. I saw his bag and I saw his shoes. And I remember many years ago when we were together in fellowship. They were all flavors. They were all what? Flavors. The pass offering pocket in front of them. Offering for what? Excuse me, we are going for a meeting. Everybody should get ready and let us go. They put their hands in their pocket. These guys don't know anything. You know, they're like, well, no, you know, well. It's time to go too much. Come and say, I'm ready, Lord. Say loud, I'm ready, Lord. I am ready, Lord. The farther you go with God, the higher you go in life. Don't let the enemy negotiate your devotion. The less dedicated you are, the less distinguished you become. It's happening tonight. Financial unrest is about hitting the world like a matter fire, but to be exempted. All you need is to covenant your finances with God. That's all you need. You will smile at the storm. 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 If you look at that scripture before I close here tonight, it says, and they sacrificed the same day. So they broke into their land of rest with a sacrifice. With what? They sacrificed unto the Lord the same day. The same day. And they brought them to where they were going. They sacrificed to the Lord the same day. Just like the sacrifice of Noah terminated the curse on the earth. The curse on their land came to an end. The curse on their land was terminated. They sacrificed to the Lord the same day. 700 oxen, 7,000 sheep. Heaven was full of smoke. And God said, it's time for your rest. It's time for what? In chapter 8 of Genesis, verse 20. And when God smelt a good summer, he said, I will no longer cause the earth anymore for man's sake. Everything that is upsetting your destiny can be terminated by sacrifice. <laughs> Hear me very carefully, and I mean everything I'm saying. That if this night you will step into a covenant by sacrifice, the next 20 years as the Lord liveth, the backbone of this commission. The Lord, the commissioner of this assignment, the Lord of hosts his name, as long as the Lord liveth, the next 20 years will be absolutely crisis free for you. <laughs> they entered into it by sacrifice. That's the hidden word there. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. For the Lord, sacrifice for the Lord the same day. The same day. The same day. 
And I'm going to target the sacrifice of roundabout rest. The sacrifice of roundabout rest. The sacrifice of roundabout rest. The burnt it. It's not that God ate it. It was a burnt sacrifice. Come on, say burnt sacrifice. Not that God drank the blood. They burnt it to God. They burnt it to God. And the smell rose in heaven. And God said, enough of crisis. Enough of ups and downs. Enough! 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 I consider this night as a night of temptation. And let me tell you what I mean. Chapter 22 of Genesis. And verse 1. And it came to pass, after these things, that the Lord did tempt Abraham. What did God do? He tempted Abraham. Genesis 22 verse 1. And what, how did he tempt him? Because he wanted to open Abraham into a new fiesta. He wanted to bring Abraham to the fullness of his destiny. So he came to Abraham without telling him what he wanted to do. Abraham... Get ready. There's an exam now. Verse 2. He said, take thy son. Come on. Look at that. He said, lest you miss it. Because you might think, why not? This one that's causing trouble at home, let's take him. Thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for what? A bond offering upon one of the mountains which I will tell thee of. Was there any promise attached to that? <laughs> that was someone you waited for 25 years. That is the child of promise by whom the entire world will be blessed. Take him! And he rose early in the morning. Habba. Now somebody is telling you there's a sacrifice that holds a guarantee of 20 year crisis free life. Round about rest. That's why they call Abraham the father of faith. There was no provision attached to the promise. Yet he rose early in the morning. Now listen to what he did. And the Bible said, Abraham went three days journey. Verse 4. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. Verse 5. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with me, with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship. Underline the word worship. And worship and come again to you. And worship, not and trade. And worship. Come on, they are going to worship the Lord with my only soul and with fire in my hand and a knife in my pocket. Abba. And Abraham said, when I was reading this early this morning, I was crying. And Abraham said, to Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac. Abba. He said, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife in his pocket. And they went both of them together. And Isaac said, what am I saying? Verse 7. Are you there? And Isaac spoke unto Abraham his father and said, my father. And he said, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? He katumaru shabara yetamohuzabe yatuma. That was how Abraham, Abraham had his fatherhood and carried it along to heaven. And they still call him Father Abraham in heaven. 
That was what opened up the unending destiny of Father Abraham. He passed the test. Amen. And he said, Behold, and Abraham said, verse 8, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together. And they came to the place where God had told them of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. This was no drama. Heaven was watching the steps to see whether it was an arrangement, a pretense. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven. They were watching from heaven, just like heaven is watching right now. Watching from heaven, just like heaven is watching right now. And said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am, I, here am I. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the Lord, neither do them anything. Do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God. Sin, thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went there and took the ram and offered him for a burnt offering unto the lord and abraham called the name of that place jehovah jireh as they said to this day in the month of the lord it shall be seen what you are going home with today will be seen in your life solidly the next 20 years Listen to this. Verse 16. And said by myself. Look at verse 15. And the angel of the Lord spake on, called on Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, by myself have I sworn. I see God swearing something on your life today. <laughs> so because thou hast done this thing. There is something to do that will make God bring you to the fullness of his program and destiny for your life. May you be sensitive enough tonight to do that thing which will ratify your covenant of all unrest and crisis free life. May you be sensitive enough tonight to do that thing that will make you live in the war free zone of life and give you rest round about and make you a beneficiary of Jehovah Jireh that you come to the mountain of the Lord where nothing is lacking you come to the mountain of the Lord where everything needed is on the spot that's where you are coming into because thou hast done this thing that's all that they did that God gave them rest and about for they covenanted with God and they sacrificed unto the Lord the same day and the same God that gave them rest. Twenty years round about and made them not to see war for twenty years. That same God is saying, I am the Lord and I change not. He's here right now. As he began speaking to me on this, I said, I have a comprehensive insurance for the next twenty years. I said that to myself. I have a comprehensive insurance for the next 20 years. That is, I can afford to relax. When they say there's an earthquake, I know it can't quit where I'm standing. I can relax. When they say this plane may drop, I know it can't drop because I'm inside it. Hello? Because I have bought an insurance to cover it. Listen to me. This is how the stars in the kingdom are made. They are made by sacrifice. Amen? Gather my sins to me together. Those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. Is that in your Bible? Who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. This is your night of encounter. It's our 15th year 
We are celebrating this today. And God said, I'm saying no more hiding your head behind the bush anymore. You are coming out of your wilderness to the limelight. You are coming out of your reproach into stardom. You are coming out of your lack into plenty. You are coming out of your sickness into health. You are coming out of your barrenness into fruitfulness. You are coming out of every wilderness experience into a city experience. God is terminating your frustrations for celebration tonight. All your frustrations are converted to celebrations from tonight. That's all they did to earn a 20-year war-free period. To experience a roundabout rest. That's all they did. That's all they did. And as we step into this thing tonight, I see your heavens open. I see your heavens open. I see your heavens open. That this will be the giant covenant stride into your seasons of rest. It will be your covenant giant stride into your war free zone in life. After this time, you will wonder what people call problems anymore. I shared with you the other time that many years ago a young man met me and said, Brother David, do you ever have problems? Because he looked and I'm not playing, I'm not praying the way they pray. I don't cry the way they cry. He said, Do you ever have problems? I said, Maybe it came, I didn't know. Maybe it came, I didn't what? There is a more than conqueror's realm. Where forces are fighting in your behalf in the unseen because of where you are standing. Because of what? Because of where you are standing. Because of where you are standing. I want you to locate a covenant positioning for yourself tonight by a sacrifice. Say to God, I am going all out with you as that your son did. I want a new beginning. I want to secure my destiny. I want to experience an uninterrupted un, un, un rest. I want to fly on the wings of the eagles. I want to experience supernatural favor. I want to enjoy dignity in my Christian work. I want to see your hand in my life afresh. I believe in the 15th year prophecy that terminates wilderness wanderings. I see my wilderness terminated. I ratify this covenant by sacrifice. This is the night I've long waited for. No more tears, no more shedding tears, no more depression, no more sorrow of heart. I am going full blast into what heaven has in store for me. That your husband will be released to you. That your wife will be released to you. Those children will be released to you. Those jobs that have been, that have been going around in circle all these years, it will burst forth. Yeah.